Good afternoon everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying economics lectures. In this lecture we're going to be discussing about uh, producer theory. What we mean, uh, you, you guys have seen that uh, we, guy, we have forms. Okay. So what do we mean by form? What kind of different forms we have in a, you know, in a country or in a typical economy since we are talking about economy here. So you guys might have heard about or read about that um, you can set up a business uh, in terms of uh, private ownership or proprietorship or as a limited liability corporation LLC or as a corporation. Okay. So the or you can set up as a non-profit organization. So every uh, business setup, it has uh, its own uh, um, advantages and disadvantages in terms of mainly for government tax structuring and liability. Okay? In terms of what is the function of an organization or a firm, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of organization you set up. Okay? You can set up LLC, you can set up... Uh, you know, corporation, non-profit organization. So what it is, a firm, it takes the input, produces something, okay, does some operation and produces something or gives you the output. So think about, uh, you know, it, it's a black box, something, some input is going inside it and some output is coming out, okay. So what we mean here that some productive inputs firm is taking and some goods and services firm is producing. All right. So that's a basic function of a firm. And uh, we can call it uh, production. That's a process, whole process. We can call it as a production process. Okay. Um, now let's try to understand uh, in a mathematical form, more rigorous, uh, you know, approach as we typically do in economics, we try to, you know, map different things to different variables so that we can, you know, form some algebraic equations and, uh, you know, try to um, give the answers of our different things. So, for example, here, uh, we want to know what is the production, how the production is going to get impacted based on inputs okay or if we change the inputs what sort of change gonna be in the output okay so let's try to form an algebraic equation so we can represent um, productive inputs as x and goods and services as y okay and the form which is producing something is represented by a function which takes x as an input and produces y, right? So we call this fx the production function, okay? And as uh, we can say that form you can think of as a mechanism for transforming productive inputs into final or intermediate goods and services, okay? For example, Think about a chocolate factory. It is taking some raw material, say sugar, coca, and other uh, raw material to manufacture the chocolate. Okay, and the firm is manufacturing or applying production function and producing output, which is chocolate. Okay, clear now what sort of uh, production function will take a mathematical form so there there are um, you know different approaches for defining these production functions out of which cobb douglas production function is uh, popular what uh, we use in economics um, so for for your understanding at a basic level this is good enough if you want to do research, uh, you can find out some other production function, you know, but uh, that's more sort of if you want to go into higher studies. Um, 
So conductless production function, what it is? This function basically is just, it's a very simple function, okay? It takes some inputs, x1, x2, xn, and the function itself is that some constant, okay, multiplied by all these inputs, and each input is raised to the power some constant, okay? Positive constant, typically, um, So that's a basic form of a Cobb Douglas production function. Okay. Inputs raised to the power some constant. Right. Now let's let's see an example. Okay. So if K is the capital, okay, capital invested in in form. Okay, you have this company, you have this organization which is producing something. So you invested some money into it your capital investment. So we are representing it very well with K. Now it's a funny thing that why don't we represent by C? I think it came from Germany because in German language capital is K-A-P-I-T-A-L. Uh, I'm just guessing. Anyways, and L is labor. I mean labor, you know, human resource, how much uh, you have employed in the farm or let's say we were discussing about the chocolate factory example how much money you have invested to set up a chocolate factory and how many people are working in that chocolate factory okay so what should be the uh, production function or how we can represent it okay it's very simple y arrays the goods and services the output is equal to the production function f which is taking only two input in a simple case k and labor now for simplicity we are saying that only one output or good is produced by this form there can be more but for simplicity just one and then in the same form a0 k to the power alpha so instead of calling it a1 we just called it alpha and l to the power beta okay now commonly used alpha and beta are between 0 to 1 okay so let's say an example for an example that a0 is 1 alpha is 1 by 3 beta is 2 by 3 so for these values of these parameters uh, what will be the value of y okay so y will be simply if you substitute the values of this alpha and beta in above equation you'll get simply k to the power 1 by 3 and l to the power 2 by 3 and now you can calculate how much capital you would need if you need y output okay so that comes out to be the equation what you did simply here you have taken the uh, y cube, so y to the power 3, you know, both sides of the, you have increased the power to the 3, so k, and then l, 3, 3 is cancelled, l is square, and then when you take l is square in the denominator of y, it becomes l to the power minus 2. So you, you get k or let me write it for simplicity so here what you did is you have increased y to the power 3 k l square because 3 is cancelled out now because you have raised this whole to the power 3 and once you take L to the left side, it becomes K equal to Y cube L minus 2, okay? Now, let's try to uh, plot uh, or take a graph between K and uh, labor, okay? So what we see here, we see a typical, this kind of graph, okay? Now, if you can change 
uh, the values of alpha and beta and you can get a different uh, graph. Now, so we, we understood what it is uh, we mean by the production function, okay? And what is a typical form of production function in terms of Cobb-Douglas production function? Now let's try to understand one more uh, important point here. What is the marginal product, okay? So marginal product is simply the derivative of this uh, production function with respect to uh, any one of the input or whatever. Say if you are uh, want to get what is the marginal product okay, with respect to labor, then you would have to take partial derivative with respect to labor. Say we want to have a marginal product with respect to capital then we want to have a partial derivative with respect to k, okay? How we can have it? Simply, let's talk about marginal product of capital K, what it means by we have taken the partial derivative with respect to k, and once we take partial derivative with respect to k, constant a0, a0, uh, k to the power alpha, um, if we take the derivative, it will become alpha k to the power alpha minus 1 and then L to the power beta untouched. Now, those who are not familiar with calculus, um, you may watch uh, calculus video lectures. But for simplicity here, just remember this formula. We have taken the partial derivative. Okay. Now, what it signifies to us? So we can deduce a couple of facts from this equation, okay, about the k and l. So what it means that if we increase the capital, okay, what's going to happen? Remember the, the alpha, alpha and beta, they are between 0 and 1. So alpha is less than 1. So this value, if you increase capital, okay, and you are not increasing labor, so your marginal product with respect to capital will not increase, okay? It's in denominator. But say you are not, uh, you know, touching capital K, but you are increasing the labor. Then marginal product with respect to capital will increase, okay? Is it the positive power of L. Now, how you can visualize it? Let's say uh, in your chocolate factory, you have uh, 100 workers, okay, and you have just one computer, and you decide to increase the workers by 100 more, and you did not increase the computer, one computer. So what, what's going to happen if you increase computer by one, okay, because labor, proportionally, your labor is, is increased more, okay, in that proportion. So your marginal product will increase. But at the same time, if you are increasing the computer in your factory, say your labor is uh, 100 and you are increasing computer by the you know huge amount or let's say 100 more, you're gonna put more money into buying those computer. So the marginal product with respect to capital investment will decrease, will not increase, okay? So that's a basically uh, the visualization of, uh, or how you can put this equation, mathematical equation, in terms of a real um, picture, um, how the form is operating, okay? So always remember that, you know, if you, if you wanna put too much money and you're not increasing your labor, it may adversely affect your um, marginal product. Now, what is the value of the marginal product, okay? So if we, if we talk about the value of the marginal product, simply value V
value of the marginal product will be simply price times multiplied by equation okay good so guys uh, thank you very much i hope you have enjoyed this uh, short lecture on uh, production theory we're going to be discussing more in coming lectures and thank you for your wonderful comments and uh, subscribing the professor channel those who haven't subscribed yet uh, please subscribe the professor channel on youtube that helps to notify you um, for the new new videos as soon as they are available have a wonderful day